Joining me today on the show is Nikhil Bora, Managing Director and Head of Research at IDSC Securities. Nikhil, thanks for joining us on this leg of the show. The first question here being the markets have seen inflows of over $12 billion this year and have seen a good rally on the back of these inflows as well. The question is, do you think this euphoria will stay? Uh, let me just put it in context. Uh, you know, we've been uh, extremely bullish uh, over the last couple of years when clearly the sentiment for India was uh, pretty much at the lowest level possible. Uh, I'm starting to become slightly more cautious, uh, not not so much for the markets in general, but, you know, it's uh, it's a time when you, you want, uh, when you know that uh, it's time for execution in India. It's no longer about expectations, which is what one was building up for the last couple of years. So I think on expectations, the government uh, and, and the broad investors have done pretty much uh, what was expe expected because at the margin, things were looking much, much better. Uh, but now as you get into execution, I think the challenges will be thrown in there. And, and my sense is execution by its own nature will take at least a couple of years to really get grounded in. So... You know, uh, there's this, uh, you know, I, I've been learning guitar over the last few months and, you know, there's this uh, musical notation called uh, Sesora, which is basically a pause. So, you know, you need to pause for some time uh, before you really head for the direction that you want to be. So I think markets are really at that stage where one really needs to pause, uh, wait and think about uh, which part of the market you're getting into because this is clearly not a trend market. It's not a trend uh, solidly upward, nor a trend solidly downward. So... My sense is this is the time when uh, stock selection becomes so much more important uh, to really monetize out of market which may rem really remain in range for some time. Mm. Nikhil, that's true. In fact, RBI responded with a 25 basis cut in the last policy meet is what we saw. And going by a recent presentation as well where you mentioned that on-ground execution is still slow and new orders stalling, you believe that probably the only relief factor is going to be rate cuts? Uh, uh, pretty much. You know, that's where uh, we were at that you know, while the while the macros or, or uh, the tailwinds seem to be favorable, uh, there are still headwinds which are not going to go away uh, so so soon. So you're looking at execution on ground, which uh, clearly has not really picked up momentum as much as one would anticipate. So if you look at the private sector, they've been extremely, extremely cautious in the way they invest in the markets and in India today. Uh, the fact that if you look at the top 10, 10 industrial groups in India uh, who led the last wave of growth, uh, you see leverage in those companies' balance sheets at uh, compounding at 35% plus in the last five years, whereas the revenue growth of the same subset is less than 15%. So clearly there is a there is a disconnect between uh, what they are able to get out of the out of the investment that they have done till date, and uh, it seems pretty unlikely that uh, you know these guys will require at least two rounds of capitalization. One is for survival capital and then growth capital, and uh, and that will take some doing. So. I think firstly, private sector um, investments in India, uh, I think, uh, will still be significantly back-ended. Uh, and it's unlikely it will happen during a period where you are likely to see a government change and thereby uh, some amount of uh, discontinuity into policies. So my sense is it's at least a one year before one starts to see that uh, coming into play. Uh, second is, uh, you know, on the supply of paper. Uh, you know, my sense is that when you look at supply of paper today, uh, there is at least close to around 14 to 15 billion dollars of forced supply in the market, which will come in without creating adequate capacities. So uh, these are basically change in shareholding, uh, be it government divestments or or SEBI uh, SEBI norms for meeting 75% shareholding. So I think there is uh, there is decent amount of supply which will come in the market, and uh, that's not really going to create adequate uh, cap capacity and capital here. Mm. Nikhil, now let's talk about earnings as well. Most of the larger companies have reported their uh, earnings for Q4. So far, how has the quarter been in your view and what kind of cues do you pick up for the other quarters? You know, there are, there are two things to look at. Uh, firstly, the earnings in the near term, uh, clearly they are not really surprising, uh, surprising on the upside. Uh, they aren't. Uh, so earnings have been moderate. Uh, uh, they, they haven't really, uh, they haven't led us to look at, uh, look at our FI14 and FI15 numbers. Uh, in an extremely positive manner, not yet. Uh, second is, you know, you look at the quality of earnings, and that I think is important to look at. Uh, you look at the quality of earnings uh, three, four years back, uh, uh, three-fourths of the market at that point in time was growing over 10%, uh, which meant that the earnings quality was extremely broad-based and uh, superior earnings. Uh, whereas you look at the earnings quality now, only one-fourth of the market uh, is growing over 10%, which means that the earnings quality is extremely poor, 
and it's extremely uh, skewed in favor of a few sectors. So my sense is that uh, that is unlikely to change in a hurry in the next year. You will still see a fair bit of skewness and thereby a uh, full-fledged market re-rating might still be some way off. Uh, in terms of earnings flow, I think the good part is that uh, corporate India learns to become a lot more resilient than what they are in every down cycle. So they start to live within the capital that they have today. Uh, my, my only, only uh, disconnect is that uh, you're not going to look at material earnings uh, surprises as you move forward uh, from most spaces. Uh, uh, and uh, historically, India has been a growth market. It's never very rarely been a value market uh, until the time we don't get back to a growth stage, which is very visible. Uh, you know, chasing momentum uh, may not really be the most prudent thing to do. Nikhil, one of the sectors that you track closely is the consumer and the FMCG space. What are your topics in that segment and call on the sector as well? Uh, so, you know, it's interesting again, uh, and it's, it's ironic. Uh, you know, you look at, uh, you know, we talk about investments in India and so on, be it FDI or on-ground investments. Uh, consumer companies, which fundamentally require no investments whatsoever, have done the largest in India. So, uh, Unilever does a $5 billion uh, buyback announcement, uh, and uh, Nestle Consumer invests uh, close to around 2,500 crores in India to set up additional capacities and so on. So, it's, it's interesting. Second is uh, how to look at this consumer space right now. Uh, you know, I think uh, what Unilever has done, um, and maybe it's technical right now, but I still think that what Unilever has done, which is, uh, which is this $5 billion of investments in India, uh, will ensure that, uh, that once this $5 billion of investment is done in, uh, that gives opportunity for that much of capital to flow into the entire balanced Indian consumer space. And if I take that as one indicator and uh, look at Lever XITC and that money flowing into the entire consumer pack, it can potentially get you literally 15% of the entire Indian consumption space. So that's a huge opportunity that uh, all the Indian consumer names will be sitting on, which means that the sector which is already re-rated for the business that it delivers and the performance that it delivers will potentially get further re-rated uh, because of the liquidity which will chase uh, so little stocks or so few stocks available in the system. Uh, and that's precisely the reason why you see so much of strength evolving for companies and businesses like United Spirits, uh, Nestle, Colgate, uh, Godrej, uh, Jyoti Labs and so on. So I think there is a huge opportunity cycle in being invested in the in the second tier consumer names, uh, because operationally they continue to do well, and second is there will be a fair bit of capital which will flow into these businesses uh, over the next uh, year or so. So I, I still remain positive. Obviously, there are issues in, in certain businesses and companies, but but they are not really large enough to change the trend. So my my best ideas in consumers uh, even today would be would be United Spirits and Jyoti Laboratories. Okay, now, the other segment that you track very closely, the aviation space, do you still see some value in some of the stocks there? What's the call on the sector and some of the individual stocks as well? So, you know, whatever I've learned in the last 20 years, I think you, 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 one thing is very clear that you buy aviation in distress and sell during, during, uh, during good times. Uh, uh, no pun intended there. Uh, but I, I think that, uh, you know, today if you look at aviation, I think uh, you're getting into a period where at least for the next couple of years, uh, the industry economics seems to be pretty much set. Uh, you, you, you know, you're looking at a situation where on-ground incremental capacities in the system are not really getting added in a materially large manner. Uh, you're seeing a fair bit of consolidation happen in that space. You've seen capitalization also happen for uh, some of the players, uh, Jet being obviously the lead starter there. So, and the good part is that in, in some of these players, uh, the business is not so much about what they do domestic, but what they do globally. So the reason to buy Jet Airways uh, uh, today is that they have an extremely solid uh, international platform. Uh, and uh, the reason to, so I think, uh, you know, there is a near-term trade in aviation which could last for the next year or so, uh, till the time AirAsia sets up shop and again, by virtue of being a new player in the space, they will want to take 15, 20% market share and which will mean that you'll again get into price wars over the next uh, three, four-year period, uh, by which time uh, players like Jet Airways would have, would have really ramped up the international operations significantly from where they are today. 
So I think uh, it's interesting from a near term perspective. It's interesting from the fact that uh, there has been uh, uh, FDI investments in, in JIT. Uh, uh, there is a value in this business. Uh, so uh, near term, I'm still positively aligned. Uh, longer term, I, I would still be slightly more suspect uh, in staying put.